ultimate goal, my ultimate goal is to have my Taylor Swift concert. Mm, yes. That is always my ultimate goal. And what I say is true. Just because I talk stupid doesn't mean I'm stupid. Okay, influencer. We are not as hot as we think we are. We are not. It takes a lot of time of practice, and I learned a very dear lesson. Hello, listeners. Today we talk to Sim Ling Ku, all right, or otherwise known as Auntie HR or Professional Bimbo. You might have seen her on Instagram, LinkedIn, and also TikTok. Giving HR advice. So my first question to her was how she became Han PHR. Um, she shared 20 years of a career in different companies in corporate environments. How she started, and also how she eventually wore many hats in her company, and how she became Anti HR. Uh, her life before she is now uh, what she is now as a creator. Uh, we have this photo that I found on Instagram where she. Uh, and please do notice the KLCC behind my corner office. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, before we become the professional bimbo, right, tell us more about your career before that. I just quit my job last year in mm -hmm. July. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, I was the corporate services director mm -hmm. for Perso Kali Malaysia. Mm -hmm. They are the number one workforce company in Asia Pacific and also in the country. Mm. Right? So corporate services director, very fancy title. So what I do, most of you guys know I head of HR. I was also head of admin. Mm. I was also head of service operations. And I was also head of marketing. Wow. Because that's how it is today. One salary, four jobs. Correct or not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One salary, four jobs. Head, head of so many things. Yes. But then My you're... boss always make fun that I'm TBKL director. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Then, uh, how, how do you focus on HR then? You chose HR as your background and then you focus on it? No. Mm. You want to talk about background? Ah? Mm. I am in the workforce solutions industry for 20 years. Mm. I started out my career in recruitment mm. in an agency called Kelly Services. Okay. Now they have rebranded to a personal Kelly. Yeah. yeah. Mm? So that's how I was. But you want to talk about my qualification? Mm -hmm. I have a degree in engineering. Wow. Let's pause for that. Hmm? <laughs> wow. I didn't expect that. I, I always have that kind of reaction. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very common nowadays, you know. And in fact, uh, a lot of the people I work with at senior management level, you'll be surprised, uh, a lot of them in HR are actually engineers. Mm. When they started out their career, yes. Wow. Why is that so? Is, is engineering help them to process or they are people? Mm, I would think number one, it's not regulated to be a HR professional. You don't need paper qualification. Unlike, unlike if you need to be a doctor, you need mm. to have MBA and all those, right? Or you need to be a lawyer, you need to pass the bar. But to practice HR doesn't require any paper qualification. So it's open for all. Right? Yep. Including engineers. Mm. Including engineers. And I think, like for myself, I am very successful in a role. You know, engineers are, they are very process oriented. Mm. You ask any engineers, they love flowcharts. And then if you really look into the HR profession, right, it's also a very process and, and oriented environment. Everything is about processes. If you know how to follow processes correctly, that is why I always say uh, HR are paper pushers. If your paper is chantic, uh, everything will jalan. And engineers are quite good at that. Paper pushers. Yeah, paper pushers. We are all paper pushers. Wow. And and for HR also wear many hits. Many hits last time, like you said, do marketing sometimes, you do um, no, no, I, I full marketing, full marketing, branding, all those stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a department on its own. But I will agree that I have an advantage. I can lead HR differently. Like in most countries, like in my organization, right? They have a head of marketing and they have a head of HR, mm. which is two separate one, huh? Yeah. But my boss are four in one. Mm? Like very economic shampoo like that, right? Like so I also head of marketing and I was also head of HR. So uh, when I enter both uh, meetings and it's 
sometimes when I go to a marketing uh, meeting and they have um, like an exercise to collaborate with the HR department, they will say, we have already updated the HR, this, 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 this. I'm sitting here, right? I said, yes, yes, they did yesterday because I was on the <laughs> meeting yesterday. So it does have an advantage because it allows me to see a little bit further and I am able to connect the dots. That is why sometimes when a lot of these people, they come and complain to me, uh, my boss uh, asked me to do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, do that. Uh, but I don't know whether boss is realizing it or not. The more work you give to the employer, the higher risk it is for the company. Like when I left that time, everybody also burning kepala, okay? Because one shot, you, li- you lose four heads. But, but for me, I was okay. And, and since I'm no longer in a company, I, I can out them right now. <laughs> when when there, was a, there was a joint venture happened, there was a lot of restructuring happened. When you go work in company, right? Restructuring is something very common, especially where there is a change in the strategy of the company. So my company was going through this restructuring. And then they have all this uh, vacancy open. So, so they decided to merge my job with all the other departments, fall into one. But, and they gave me a very fancy title, but a lot of people didn't know this. The terms and conditions remains the same. I have a fancy title. My salary, benefit, everything status quo. Hmm? They expand your portfolio, but everything maintained the same. Hmm? But you know what? For me, at that point of time, I think because we have nothing to show yet, so it's also very hard to bargain salary. And then we do not know whether we're going to be successful or not. I'm a little bit old school. Lah. I always um, believe in the concept of be, do, have. It's popularized by Zig Zagler, mm. which means you be the person first. Then you do what the person does and eventually you will have what the person has. So I always throughout my career, I have always be one level up while I take the one level down salary. Because for me, I have not proved my success yet. It gives me no bargaining power. So I, I, and I, and I, and at that point of time, when I took over so many things, portfolio at the same time, and this is also something very common you guys will always hear, when they give you new tasks, they don't guide you well. We just let you go there, either you sink or you swim, right? So, so I was there, I was trying to figure it out. My boss was also new on his role. So both of us were like trying to figuring out, huh? Like the blind leading the blind. But we stick, we stuck to it throughout and both of us made a lot of mistakes together. We made a lot of mistakes, but we recovered. Very important, eventually we recovered. The second part of the video, I asked Auntie HR how she grow her followers to 100,000. She has over 100,000 followers in TikTok and Instagram and how she's also growing her followers on LinkedIn as well. On LinkedIn, she has currently over 60,000 followers and what she's doing to grow that following as well. How this whole influencer started, if you really go back to the beginning, right? It all started out because I had to take over marketing. And what the f- I know about marketing. Hmm? I, I have never done marketing in my life, you know. And I remember the first time I went to a regional marketing meeting. They were talking about SEO. I didn't know what the fuck is SEO, okay? I was just sitting there. Everybody was like, okay, we need to increase SEO for the company. I'm in a freaking regional meeting representing Malaysia. And I was like, what is SEO? On the spot, I have to go. <laughs> bad I was in marketing. So, so I said, this cannot be. I have to educate. I'm already on the role. The role was the trust was bestowed upon me, although they know I know nothing about it. But I went to study and I started listening to podcasts. Wow. And I started listening to podcast, marketing podcasts. So one of the podcasts I was listening to every morning was Gary Vaynerchuk. Ah, hmm? yeah. I quite like him because he cursed like me. Yes. Hmm? Or oh, I cursed like him. <laughs> So, so I was listening to Gary Vaynerchuk and he will not talk a lot about things but one of the things he will consistently tell you is put content out there and he will tell you don't put one, two contents out there per day. 
He would tell you crazy things like, ah, uh, you need to put out 200 contents per day. Like, what the freaking fuck? Three per uh? day, all platforms. No, 200. 200. Uh. She so said, put out 200. He even, if you go to his website, uh, he even has a little guidebook to tell you how to put out 200 contents every day effortlessly, mm. right? Then, then one day, uh, I heard the podcast, he was doing this Q&A. Yeah. He was doing this Q&A with this person and he told the person that, you know, just do one. You cannot do 100, cannot do 200, then just do one. Then when I was listening to it, uh, I was like, okay, I can do one. Mm? So, I still remember that day, it was uh, 17 July 2019. So, it was a Thursday. So, I went to sit there, huh? all of you checking calendar now, right? See a calendar or not, kind. Mm? <laughs> <laughs> it was a Thursday, right? It's either 17 or 19, uh, but it's 2019. So, I went to my office, I opened my laptop, and I logged in to LinkedIn. And I have not logged in to LinkedIn for the longest time. Mm? But since I'm in marketing now, LinkedIn is part of company branding and all those stuff. I logged into LinkedIn, and I didn't know LinkedIn changed so much. When I first started using LinkedIn like 15 years ago, 20 years ago, it was purely job advertisement. Nowadays, it's like, I was like, since when LinkedIn become like Facebook, everything posting about their grandmother's punya wedding picture, la, you know, their pets. La. No, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So, so I also type like how I type in Facebook. La. I just typed something very random. I said I went to my news to buy something. Buy one free one. That's how they cheated my money. <laughs> that was my first post. And on the next day, on Friday, I put out another random post. Then comes Saturday. The question is, do you continue to post on a weekend? Because Gary said, right? Gary said you post one per day, ma. Huh? We were thinking per working day or day. <laughs> And I still remember that. Huh? I said, you know what? We really want to do this, right? Let's do it properly. So I do it on the Saturday and Sunday. So I do it continuously for 21 days. Then there's another uh, thing people say, right? If you want to cultivate a habit, you do the same thing for 21 days. So I did it for 21 days. Now the question is, do you continue the 22nd day? <laughs> hmm? Ever since until today, I have not stopped. Wow. That was five years ago. Every single fucking day, I will post something on LinkedIn randomly. Wow. Every day, when I was almost lying half dead in the hospital, I did it. When I was on my honeymoon, when I was in Italy for my honeymoon, I also did it. Every single day, I did not miss posting a LinkedIn content. Discipline, right? Hmm? I salute. I salute it's a lot. <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of Gary Vee also. This is the reason why I'm doing what I am today. Huh? I'm doing what I am doing today. I listened to him in 2016. And then I also post every day for one year. For one year oh, only. Yeah. Uh, and, and he's and the reason. Law, correct uh, not. That's why like, you're not uh, as famous yeah, as me. <laughs> yes. Yes. Correct. <laughs> anyway, so, so this is how my content creation journey started. Oh, and and I and and it just it just went on and on and on and on like that. And and how do you start doing life? Uh, that that is a little crazy story. That one. It happened on the first day was May twenty eighth. It was a Saturday. Huh? That was last year. Hey, no, the year before that in year twenty twenty two. In year twenty twenty two, May twenty eighth. That one. It's a Saturday. I remember that because we were on the way to watch Top Gun mm. in the morning and already my book in the morning. So, <laughs> before that, before that, I saw a friend of mine went live on LinkedIn. She was doing this thing. Now. Most of these LinkedIn live people, are, when they first time they go live, right, they will do this thing. Oh, today I just want to come here and test the camera. How is my LinkedIn first live? Like that. Everybody does that, right? So I saw she doing that. I was like, why is everybody going live on LinkedIn? And you have to know that not everybody can go live on LinkedIn. Yeah. It's a privilege. You have to apply for it. And the crazy part is when 
Jiwa, Jiwa was the person when Jiwa went on live. Okay, I know Jiwa. Yes. Hmm? When Jiwa went on live, I already have my LinkedIn license to go live three years already. Hmm. And there's another story how I got LinkedIn live license. <laughs> <laughs> That one because back then in 2019 when I started do all the writing right, mm. so I was very active on LinkedIn. Then I saw there was this girl who has quite a number of followers. She had like forty, eighty thousand followers, right? She kept on complaining uh, on LinkedIn that she got rejected for the live permission. Like two, three times she tried to appeal. At the mm. same time, if you guys know Daniel, if you know Doctor C, you would know Daniel. Daniel Go. He also said he also could not reject it by mm. LinkedIn. You know us, uh, sometimes we are just competitive. <laughs> For me, I just wanted to know whether with my portfolio that I'm so active posting on LinkedIn, I can get the permission or not. Because so many people got rejected. Hmm? You know the casualness, you just want to know you win or not. Yeah. So I went to apply for it, but it was straight away approved on the first application. But, but then again, I was also uh, LinkedIn key account customer. <laughs> So I don't know whether they think oh, this one I better don't talk to you. <laughs> pay money one, pay money, pay money one. So that is how it started. So on that day, I didn't realize when you guys go live on LinkedIn, it's not as easy of just switching it on like that. You need a third party software. You need a third party software. And then there's a very long guideline on how to go about it, which I didn't. Yes, which I did. So, so that morning when I saw Jiwa went live, I also want to go live. Then I tried, then I couldn't. Then my husband, I still remember that point of time uh, we were passing on the way to the cinema at the highway. Then my husband told me, you can just go live on Facebook, ma. Just press the button on it. I like, huh? How? Just press on it. Really? Okay, then I was just sura mabok that time. So, <laughs> so I just pressed live and went live. La. And obviously nobody was there to watch me. Hmm? But what I didn't know after you go live, uh, you can choose to post it Right? Yep. So then I just posted it like, It was so chacha antara bangsa okay? And I never thought people would watch it hmm? Because what my husband told me is correct Even though that point of time You're live People don't come and watch you live live You can post it And people can watch it after uh, mm. Because it's content created Posted hmm? And that's how I started my life Then two days later Somebody told me, you can do the same on Instagram. I said, you can do the same on Instagram? I didn't know that. I head of marketing. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I went, I press, uh, press. So the third day, I went to press live on LinkedIn. Eh, on, 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 uh, Instagram. on Instagram. On Instagram. So that's when I go live there. And then when... And after you go live, you are able to download uh, the video. So from all these uh, live videos, uh, we just post short, short snippets to post on TikTok. Because back then, TikTok is all about 15, 15 seconds video, not even more than one minute now. Oh, that was three years ago. They were really say it's like a 15, 30 seconds video kind of thing. So I would just snip out portions of my live session then I will post on TikTok. Mm. That's how I started on TikTok. Wow. Hmm. Actually, this TikTok thing, uh, I've started so many years ago. I've tried all sorts of contents. It didn't work. But when I started to post snippets of my life, it began to get traction. Actually, there were two particular videos that went viral. Okay, before that, you have to know how I went live on TikTok. Okay. Okay, now... TikTok is also something that you cannot simply go live anytime. Okay, remember I said Facebook, you can just press. Then Instagram, you can just press. But TikTok, no. TikTok back then, you need to have minimum 1,000 followers. Now they turunkan the quota to 300 already. Hmm? But back then, you need minimum 1,000 followers to go live. So as I post those snippets, my, flow, my followers slowly increased. So in July... Suddenly, I received one night, I received a notification from TikTok and said that you have already touched 1,000 followers, you can go live on TikTok. And then what I liked was TikTok gamify all these things. Like if you go live for 20 minutes, they will give you a batch, mm. like kind of thing, gamification. 
So I like to play all these games on my gasoness nature, right? I love to win. I'm not really gasu lah. Gasu means you are afraid to lose. But I'm not afraid to lose. But I just love winning, right? So I love winning all these badges. Ah, that's why I'm addicted to Candy Crush also. So I went live on TikTok, and TikTok got filter, make me look nicer and slimmer. So I continue on TikTok. <laughs> LinkedIn one is so bad. LinkedIn one is raw. LinkedIn one is whatever you use lah. Whatever, whatever software you uh, use. Because LinkedIn, we normally use laptop ma. Yeah, cannot use phone until today. Oh. Uh, cannot use phone. So you, LinkedIn very different lah. I think they really control mm. content there. Mm. Uh, they really want it to be educational. <laughs> uh, if you really read through their guideline, it's mm. like that. That's why they also control who can go, who cannot go. Mm. Mm. Now everyone can go already, but not many people go. Don't yes. have to apply anymore. Uh, now you can use Zoom to go some more. Zoom also can go. I know, but it, does everybody get to go, or they uh, still need to apply for it? Now you just turn on the creator mode. Now it's something called creator mode. So if it's everybody can, uh, everybody can. So the creator mode you turn on, then you get the access to this. Mm. Um, they also, but not. It's it's very mafan lah. Zoom also very mafan. You need to get the code, <laughs> the URL, everything to start the live. It's not like hmm. phone just press one button. Very mafan one. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. So hmm. you are, you are saying so you were talking about the clips on on TikTok, and then uh the LinkedIn you still do your content as usual. Am I right? Yes, I still do. Right now I'm even more aggressive because right now, I first touch my hundred thousand followers on TikTok in February last year. Mm-hmm. And then just just few months ago, I managed to cross the hundred thousand line on Instagram. Wow! Right, my next hundred thousand target is LinkedIn. Wow! Mm. So that is my next target now. And recently, I also got awarded. Uh, actually, I got award not awarded lah. LinkedIn also gamification. Yes, their whole they thing. want you to answer question. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, they have this collaborative. Mm. Articles they get the AI to generate the article, but of course, AI article is so robotic, right? So what they do, they get KOLs to come in to comment on the article to make it livelier and to involve the audiences. Whichever KOL get the highest votes, mm. likes on their comments, you will be featured on the article mm. Mm, as the top three contributors to the article. So they also gamify the whole thing, and. For each subject, uh, you can choose what subject you are good at. Then they give you a badge accordingly. Mm. So I also collecting all these badges like Girl Scout cookies now. Well, like selling Girl Scout cookies. I think I have seven, eight of these badges already. I have top workforce management. I have top HR consulting. I have top employee. Yeah, top <laughs> career development coaching. Yeah, voice. I have like 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 um, I have I have them now. But they they also want you to maintain the badge mm. if after sixty days. You don't are not active on it. They also take off the badge like that. Mm. Mm. I I want to shout out to LinkedIn. LinkedIn, please give Sinling the blue. The blue, blue one, one, right? The I have one. enough of the gold one. <laughs> I also don't have, but give Sinling. <laughs> <laughs> the blue one is the one that you don't need to maintain. It's always there. I know, I uh, know. But I've seen who has the blue one. Gary V has the blue one. Bill Gates has the blue one. Tony Fernandez has the blue one. I will show you. Not so many followers. Three thousand followers also got blue one. Of course, it doesn't matter. It's yeah. not about you. It's about whether you are a important enough public figure. Mm. Not so, three thousand followers also got. Ah, uh, probably uh. bought it lah. <laughs> <laughs> Or oh, a very important customer. I'm not. I'm not sure. But later we can. We, I can show you a few. Uh, no uh-huh. customer also. But you need to ask them why it is. We don't speculate. Okay. Maybe they have their cable there. Eh? But Who definitely knows? you should get lah. Definitely. Huh? Should get. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for campaigning for me. Yeah. Huh? Link in please. <laughs> huh? Instagram also don't want to give me my boot. <laughs> I bought it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Instagram, okay. Instagram also please give the <laughs> office. But it's okay. It's okay. Mm. I I read the terms and condition. It's fine. But but when one thing I also learned when I become this influencer, we are not as hot as we think we are. We are not. You think you are very influential. You think you are very funny. You think you are very important, but you are not. 
Why do you think I'm doing that? this pause moment for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why, why do you, you think that? You let you moment to react first. Uh, <laughs> why, why, do you, why, why, why do you come up with that conclusion? Like me, right? It's like, mm. like why you don't, don't give my blue tick? Because they don't think you deserve it. Lah. It's okay. Lah. I, I have this kiasu uh, thing. You don't give, I work harder <laughs> and show you. Mm. Mm. That is also true. That is yeah. also true. This is when... When this work-life balance thing will come in, uh, that conversation, right? If you really want to be a very successful... You know, like Gary Vee, since you are into Gary Vee, right? He will tell you how hard he worked. But do we want to work so hard? Honestly, I'm not as hardworking as people think I am also. I'm disciplined, yes. I do my... I used to... I used to... Not only... I, I used to put up full contents every day. I will do one Instagram, I will do one LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I will also go live every day and I will post one video. You know, I used to be so active on my content. I used to go live every night. Every night. I never miss one night. But it comes to a point, you will get so tired of it. Actually, the first time I stopped going live because TikTok banned me. <laughs> This, they didn't ban me They suspended me For four days <laughs> hmm? Because of my profanity lah. Oh. Mm. Did they give you Tick also? No, no They did not They did not oh, okay. hmm? But verification Is not important lah. My fans know I'm real <laughs> Also cannot curse On, on TikTok yeah. they, they allow But they also have A lot of community guidelines Mm. They are very strict Very strict you, you talk to any content creators right? They will tell you the same thing They are so strict On, link, uh, on mm, TikTok, TikTok. Mm. But you also need to understand There was one time I go live at night Then there was this person Who said Auntie I'm your fan I'm 14 years old I was like What the flying fish A 14 years old Is doing on my life So young It's really not age appropriate Whatever I'm saying From then onwards I set my thing to 18 And above for they <laughs> coming but you see But in other contents They don't have that kind of setting Like YouTube has mm. YouTube has that right TikTok doesn't have it mm. So we also need to be I also think as content creator We also need to know They put up the community guideline there For a reason Not for fun mm. Of course they want to be As spicy As raunchy as they can mm? But we also want To take care of the community Safety And follow their guidelines And sometimes as content creator we so into ourselves and into so our content now we lobby lobby cuts it too and not realizing it, correct or not? Yeah. Huh? So I think it's always nice to have rules uh, to keep us steady. But it's okay. Yeah. On on the corporate front, they also not very approving of my profanity. My boss has spoke to me a few times about it also. <laughs> huh? But I think it's a good training. It's a good training. It, the, the most difficult part in like all things in life is to find the balance. Yeah. You, know, you just need to find the balance And I find it Very balancing Now I go on TikTok I will behave I will promote my Dilarang photo merch there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then After You know sometimes When you cook chi cook chi, uh, Then after I finish My live on TikTok I will release it On my Instagram That's where I call My MBA gang My gang Membabi Bersama mm. Mm -hmm. Membabi Bersama Auntie That's where I go to Instagram And let it all out you know So you need to find That little balance On your My life My producer Elton Is uh, we'll watch hmm? together With his girlfriend huh? the You person. see that, that is the whole thing About my pseudonym Professional bimbo right From 9 to 6 I have a high fly job As a professional But after 6 After 6 We just want to be You know A bimbo And talk stupid hmm? We don't want to use Our brains before and, and what I say is true Just because I talk stupid Doesn't mean I'm stupid Okay Mm, yes. Right now. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. In this section of the video, I asked Auntie HR about her life as an influencer, how she has been so far. I think she has one year now since she left her corporate job and how she is now practicing her craft of speaking to live audiences. And also now she is venturing into training and working with different companies to help empower individuals as well. Right now, I'm focusing on a lot of ground activities. And talking through a phone, through a camera, is very different when you go with a live audience. Mm. Mm? 
like how I bomb on my comedy show. Although it's a sellout show, the lesson that I've learned, mm. please don't lose my daytime job. It's it's very. Can I show the photo? A, you have mm, a, you have photo mm. actually of the, the comedy yeah, show. Yeah, not my comedy show. Yeah, it, it was a, it was a sellout. But but you know what? If you speak to a live audience, it's a different ball game. It requires a lot of practice. Yes. And I thought that I can tell you this. That's why I say yeah, we are not as good as we think. Yeah. There were a few times because I do it so well on my life every night. I thought I will wing it lah, ah oh, lah, public speaking guy, ha bowling ju lah. I went a few times without rehearsing, you know, and I went on stage and I was like, it's very different because when you when you go online, right, I cannot see the audience reaction, so I will be able to keep going. When you have a live audience who has no reaction. You will just stand there and do, and you will panic. You will panic, <laughs> and when you panic, right, everything will the strabot clam kabot. Okay, I forgotten all my lines. I forgotten all my script. Huh? It takes a lot of time of practice, and I learned a very dear lesson from a few times that I bomb on stage. That's why I cannot do so many things anymore. When you have a lot of things to work, even like me in my previous corporate job, that's what I learned, right? I have four major portfolios, but different time will require you different attention to where you want to put it to to prioritize what's important. So right now, since I want to focus on on the ground activity, because that is the one they are paying me, all these podcasts that they don't pay me, okay. <laughs> hmm? So I need to prioritize what works. So I I don't want to go on live, and I don't have the energy to go practice. So I take. I take off my. I cut down my lifetime, because offline you will see me pacing up and down in house practicing my public speaking speeches. Mm. And that's how I don't want to kill myself. Mm. You know, if I want to be very famous instantly, I can. I continue to do my life, and I continue to uh, practice. Right then, I. Play much lesser Candy Crush, and I don't watch my Netflix. I kill myself working lah, like a workaholic lah. I can, but I don't want to le. Hmm? I still want to live longer eh. <laughs> and I and I quite like it lah. This is what I have learned from the young. Hmm? Your generation would uh values work life balance a lot. Yeah. Hmm? <laughs> the generation Y, the society generation, right? Hmm. But people like me, the exes or the boomers, we do not know what is work-life balance. We only know how to work, 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 work. Hmm? This work-life bi- balance thing uh, was taught to me by the younger generation. Hmm? I've, uh, yeah. They they really value their life more than their work. I find the Gen Z somehow is just life, no work. <laughs> so, huh? Yeah. yeah. They they work. They yeah. actually work. They yeah. actually work, but they don't kill themselves mm, working. Yeah. Well, they don't like. Um, you look at the Gen Gen Z now. They say compared to their generation, ownership of homes, mm. it's not as high as our generation. Mm. Most people my age would own a home. Hmm? Mm. Your generation maybe half half. The Gen Gen Z are even lesser. They believe mm. in renting. Hmm. Hmm. No. Yeah. Even software nowadays, everything we rent. I also learn renting. Hmm? I, we talk about cloud services. That's renting. Yep. We don't use old servers like IBM's anymore. No, 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 no offense, IBM. <laughs> you get what I mean or not? Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's a lot about ba- practicing this balancing. Mm. It's really a skill. Everything in moderation, even moderation. And it's so freaking hard. So you say you've been practicing, right? So is there any live events coming out that you're practicing? Oh for? yes, yes, yes. Um, actually, here in this building is some iconic. I'm coming back on the twenty seven. Okay, okay. For the marketing cow cow event. Yes, we had I'm Eric gonna, today. <laughs> yeah, I gonna teach everybody the art of keep passing. <laughs> it's a very important skill, especially in Asian countries mm. where relationship. A relationship, ah! Huh? I was just telling you all, lah. Huh? Especially if you want to do business with the Chinese, ah, huh? they have a lot of trust issues. Okay, that's where all the cable have to come to connect. Hmm? Then, um, I plan to do my certification for train the trainer. Okay. Right. 
I just got mine last you year. You just got your? Yeah. yeah, last year? Are yeah. you conducting any public training? Yes, soon. So not yet since last year. Uh, uh, no, I so you like me also lah. Got the LinkedIn license very long, never use it lah. No, I was a trainer before I got it. I always get client money. Then client say, hey, actually can, you can get this one. We don't need. We can get from government money. Same lah, same lah. Yeah. Same, same. So same, HR, same reason. Yeah, HRDF certified. <laughs> T -t -t -t. Hmm? <laughs> so I plan to do that. So that, but my ultimate goal, my ultimate goal, is to have my Taylor Swift concert. Hmm? Yes. That is always my ultimate goal. Not really a concert concert per se. But I want to have like You know like Coachella mm. It's like a Grand festival I want to have a Corporate version of it mm. Like a HR Coachella mm. uh, Like a HR Taylor Swift concert uh, So I have A lot of I, I want to have like Sell out stadiums mm. Maybe not stadium lah, huh? Maybe a mini Stadium Conference mm. Mm. And I have a lot of idea We probably have songs mm. We have dance Wow. We have people coming to speak. It's like a festival. Mm. Hmm. And most importantly, you know, Malaysia, uh, I've talked to a lot of these event organizers, right? Especially all these poor comedians. <laughs> you know, they you know they will always come and tell you, uh, Malaysia like to buy ticket last minute. So 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 they always worry until the last minute to see whether their show can sell. I was just talking to Eric. Eric oh. said I sell out the early bird, early bird sell out already. Then mm. I only do. Mm. Yeah, corporate is different. Sell out, sell out the early bird first. Correct, but it's not really a lot. But what mm. Eric is doing is a minimum number. Yeah. In order yeah. for him to start, so, yeah. he will do a minimum number, right? So, but you will hear this this issue everywhere you go. I want to do it differently. I want to be like a co-play. I mm. want people <laughs> start queuing. Hey, why cannot buy? Why cannot? <laughs> that is the ultimate dream la. Yeah. That is the ultimate dream I, I, I am Now That is the goal That I want to get there To mm. have my Taylor Swift concert hmm? mm. So right now I'm just learning I'm learning how this Because this whole Influencer business thing uh, Is also very new mm. hmm? Organizing events All this training stuff Is also all very new to me mm. huh? Like I, I I hate this red card thing Red card Red card mm. You talk any agency Come and message you Can you share with us Your red card <laughs> I know it's something Very common mm? Mm. But I, I just don't like it If I do not know The job that I'm going for mm. How would I know How much I quote you It's like I go for a job right I got I got know my salary range mm. But I also want to understand What you expect out of me And what is in your Total package Maybe my basic is low You can give me high commission Or there's very good bonus I do not know mm. Mm, I don't have a standardized rate card I have a minimum rate la. Like all of us, right? We have a minimum salary We mm. have a minimum take home To go as mm? So uh, all these agency who come to me I will tell them the same Give me your phone number Let's talk about it first mm. Mm. Moreover uh, I think That Right now, I can boldly say You will not find a KOL That is very active on these three platforms together TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn. on LinkedIn mm. It's either they are on one side But yeah. not all three huh? So I am also on top of that You will also not find Someone with a background A kind of rich corporate background like me mm. So right now, a lot of People want corporate customers, mm. which they can get through me. Yep. Mm? And I have very good track records. I have a few companies which who experimented with me at an early age. One of them was my ex boss. Mm. Mm? My two ex bosses, Hunters International, they have their own agency now, Hunters and also Angeling. They came and support my content. Mm. Um, so we experimented throughout it to see how effective it is. And it's proven. A, Effective When these uh, agencies talk to you Instead of red card You need to talk to them first Understand what they want But, but I, also, mm. I also eventually learn Because it's the thing that they are used to mm. It's something they are used to, right? So I also don't want to give them a very hard time hmm? We also want to come and meet in the middle Sometimes when we negotiate salary uh, We also want to meet in the middle It's also very hard Because they are also middlemen at the end of the day they yeah. are a middleman to a middleman, and we are the. 
fear at the end product here lah, huh? and in the middle they will to wall up whatever they wall up in between. Okay, so I also understand they are also trying to make money in the middle. So I also just give them a standard rate card lah, easier. Mm. Mm. And you can you know top up, <laughs> mm. adjust from there. I I don't I don't really top up and and it 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 depends of who the client is. I'm mm. I'm a little bit more particular who is the client. Mm. Hmm? I can also tell you what uh, there was one time a government agency mm. outsourced to this very big company, and this big company sent an intern to come and negotiate with me. You rather mampus that intern come and negotiate with me. <laughs> Anyways, I but but I also uh so a lot of the clients that I help out are SMEs, hmm? because normally when it comes to SMEs, right, the boss are very hands on, so they will come negotiate directly with me, and I understand this is also very new, and they probably don't have big marketing budgets like the MNC we are used to, so I also work with them. To mm. meet in the middle, I have some of some of the jobs that I do for them. They don't even pay me a fee for how I advertise. But they for every sale I bring in, I will get a cut. Mm. Mm. Because I'm very result oriented, and that's what my corporate experience has taught me to be. I've been managing P and L ah for almost eighteen twenty years, mm. so I know what matters at the end of the day is the bottom line. Yep. Mm. Yep. You are right. There's uh, not many influencers like you that mm-hmm. have all three platforms. And in the HR niche, some more HR niche business. Mm. My mm. business acumen is also very high. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, so I think I'll ask a different question okay. today. So because a lot of my audience on LinkedIn, we met on LinkedIn. So a lot of your question you get is people like, okay, how to negotiate salary lah, how to get leave lah. I la. get all sort of question, but. I think one of the first one million videos, I mean, they hit the one million view that I had on TikTok was when I was talking about annual leave, mm. and that is when even the name Anti HR was not created by myself. It's what was given to me by my fans. They call me Anti HR, so I might as well just take it and embrace it lah. I was like Anti, being called Anti, lay low more Anti, correct? Not call me Anti, but but eventually I got, I embraced that nick that was given to me, and it has been working out very well. So I think because of that, I was known to be the HR guru. In this part, I talk to Anti HR on better negotiation skills for better salary, and also I ask her. On what is the best way to recruit for companies? What is her advice? LinkedIn jobs different, mm. and because Job Street right now in the market is also one of the most not because are you sponsored by Job Street? Yeah, not because okay. of that. It's not because <laughs> of that. You go to any recruitment agency, ah, uh, you'll be surprised, ah, uh, they buy a lot of job boards from Job Street. Okay. Because they still garner the largest market share mm-hmm. in the country. In the region, actually, mm-hmm. currently Malaysia, Singapore, Job Street is still the go-to place to look for job. For LinkedIn, number one, they are not cheap. Mm, yes, they are not cheap, right? Number two, I think not everybody is on LinkedIn. Mm. LinkedIn is good when you guys want to hit hunt. Mm. Perhaps, perhaps I would mm. say, uh, more senior to meet to. Mid and mid management and above lah is more of a LinkedIn market. Mass market is still Job Street, but mm. of course you have a lot of competitors lah. That you got the Mau Kajas, mm. all different kind of portals mm. that are there too. Like used to have Muda, I think Muda still have right. Muda have. Uh, Muda have. There's like Hyatt Lee also. Ah, uh, Hyatt Lee, yes, mm-hmm. Hyatt Lee. They ha- they have all different kind of models. Job board is still the way to go. Mm. SMEs for SME, but from my experience, the best recruitment method is still through referral. Mm. Why? Why do you think that is so? Because there's somebody who vouching for somebody. Like somebody, Elton? somebody is taking accountability of something. Because I recommend this person to you. All mm. right. So the person also have to be responsible with the person they're recommending. Right, he mm. also has to be responsible to the person, the company that he is recommending. Huh? I think still recommendation is still the best way. Not to say that, but but it's not something 
can be done overnight. When you guys do bulk recruitment, it doesn't work. Mm. It can be one of the channel, but it's not fast. Because in order for you to do such recommendation, uh, you also need to build trust. And build trust takes time. Mm. Mm. Wow. Okay, thank you for, for sh sharing that. Building trust takes time, uh, job street, and of course, referral is the best. Referral is the best. But if you want to fast, you go to job bots. Mm. How, like you say, it takes time, right? So you mean that to build this referral culture is a culture, right? They, the companies need to incentivize or how would you go about it? Most company does. Mm. Most company does to encourage. Because if you go through a recruitment agency, it's much more expensive because it's a full suite of services they're giving you. Mm. It's very, very expensive to go through a recruitment agency, but they guarantee results, yeah. right? And then if you go to job boards, um, you also compare to your interview a stranger to compare to someone to they refer to you uh, you will probably trust the referral a bit more because it's still recommended by someone compared to a total stranger because it's just human nature mm. when somebody put a good word for you you will trust a little bit more right so um, I, won't, I don't say don't restrict it go for different different kind of channel of course after the boom of the social media, to post an ad on anywhere like Facebook or Instagram is uh, free. Mm. Mm, they don't charge. Actually, you can also write a post on LinkedIn. They also don't charge. Yep. Mm? You can always do that. But I see a lot of them is not effective because you guys don't have followers. Okay. Okay. Mm? Yeah. Or, or, you know, find, <laughs> find ah, uh, to help you to recruit. So in the last part of the interview, I actually asked Auntie HR about her merchandise, right? So you can see me wearing the Dilarang Bodo shirt. She actually puts a lot of effort into her merchandise. When I bought these shirts as well, I received a personal written note from her and how she is venturing into other merchandise as well, including Ang Pao's and Hari Raya packets. So it's very interesting to learn how she actually tailors her merchandise. So, so this, this started... When I venture into the... This, so we can look, look to that camera. Uh, <laughs> I don't have to look. I can look at you also. Okay. Okay, yeah. Because when I first started this merch, because it's part of my career path. When I first come out to decide to do this full time, I follow a lot of local influencers to see how they survive. And you will notice that most of them are very young with not much working experience, all these young influencers. I follow people like Sadi, Ivor, you know, um, that part Right mm. Because They are Very famous Local influencers and, and I realised Most influencers They own A merch line To generate revenue mm. As one of their Revenue stream So I was like Okay So I want to think Of a merch line So this Dilarang Bodo thing I I have This thing with me Like forever already It's just that I was never Very aggressive with this merch So I thought this was the right time To go out for it And that's when I started my merch line And I, I'm very grateful A lot of our followers uh, They come and support me And that's why you wanted to show my thank you card, right? Huh? <laughs> yeah huh? So we, when I bought my, my this shirt I have a thank you card mm -hmm. Especially Roten <laughs> yes. yes All 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 people who buy my merch They will receive this uh, little thank you note from me It's something I also learned during my corporate days It's a little bit uh, Match of everything When I was young Do you guys have pen pals? Pen pals? Yes huh? I have I love writing to pen pals Back then If you are at my age Oh no uh, You are not my age uh, You are 10 years younger than me huh? When you are my age uh, you, uh, you will remember This magazine called Galaxy I know, I know. <laughs> and on the back of the page, they used to have people with addresses where you can write to fan pals. Oh. Huh? And I love uh, exchanging data because back then we don't have email and all those such mm. to, to, to get uh, friends, mm -hmm, to know strange. It's not like nowadays, you've got coffee meets bagel and all those things, mm. right? And I love stickers. Mm. Mm -hmm. Since young, I love stickers. So, I also learned that when I was in corporate, we have this exercise called thank you note. Every quarter when I come out for a meeting, people will write random thank you notes to thank each other in the company. Mm? And then we will have a little lucky draw of the thank you note. 
right? So when I combine this thank you note plus my love for pen pal plus my love to sticker, that's why you get a special thank you note from me. Oh, thank you. And I and I do this for every single purchase. Wow. And I and I love it. It's so terrible. This is one of the most fun part of my job. Every night, just sitting down there, sticking stickers, buying stickers online to stick on the sticker. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it and love it. Huh? And, and ever since, ever since we first started out with a notebook, my best seller currently is the notebook. Wow. Mm -hmm. I brought it. Husband, can you give me the, the my demo? I brought my whole demo box. Okay. Mm -hmm. give me a, like <laughs> while he's bringing, oh, yeah. How did this phrase, did Aram Bodo, come about? Oh, this one. You know, when you, when you go to. Uh, nowadays when you comment You can comment with a sticker Okay Right You yeah. can comment on the sticker This happened like A very long time ago Like also like some 15 years ago like that I saw One of my My, my friends Like 10 years ago I saw she put a comment On Facebook With a Dilarang Bodo sticker oh. And I thought it was so funny it was so funny. I draw out the logo, then I turn it into a poster and I stick it on my office. <laughs> and 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 every time everybody who pass by that cubicle of mine, they would they will laugh at that little sticker that I put there. So from there, I actually printed out notebooks to sell. But I I have a full time job back then. I don't have much time. So this is my notebook. Wow. This is my best sellers. And then uh, we have different, different versions of this notebook. Every notebook behind, you will see there's a phrase here. Wow. So this phrase, this is the fourth edition. It says that, Pandai itu boleh diajar, tetapi bodoh jika enggan belajar. <laughs> hmm? Then our latest version is version 5. It says that, Bijak tak pernah kalah, bodoh tak pernah menang. It's like a collection lah. Like that lah. So everyone, and I also decorate inside. Wow. <laughs> Continue my love of sticking things. <laughs> and we have grow leaps and bounds from then. This was my first thing. And then we also have caps. This is my latest one. Mug. Hmm? And I want to talk to you a little bit about this mug. This is your normal mug. You, when you can't kind of buy from anywhere. You maximum, maybe you can put three fingers, four fingers like that. If your hand very big. This is my mug. You can put your whole hand there. Mm. Hmm? Very good. And it's bigger. This is 350. My mug is 450. You empty a bottle of can of coke, you can still put some ice. Can ah. and hold. Uh, it's designed very special, this mug. Uh, I love this mug right now. So I have all this merch la, coming out. My latest project is in production right now. I'm creating a muhiba packet. Oh, what's that? Ah, it's like uh, your ang pao packet. Oh. But it comes in three colors. I have red color. For Chinese And then I have green for Raya And I found out recently Indian also have purple Oh yes uh, So mm. I have purple packet Green packet And red packet At mm. each packet There's a little element Of their tradition In the packet I decorated it mm. uh, It's coming out I'm going to call it The Muhiba packet uh, oh. Very useful When you guys go for Whatever occasion Wedding ka, Whatever because we have all sort of friends, right? Different occasion, you will pick the right color la, to go. But uh, what I like about it is it's cross. You can always use it for different occasion. Like for example, my green packet right now, Raya, right? On the back and the front, you will see the Dilarang Bodo logo. Mm -hmm. On the back of the packet, it's written there, Kosong Kosong. Mm. You know what that means? Macam dia faham. Tahu tak apa tu? You know, in Malay, they, every year during Raya, they will say Ma'af, Zahir, and Batin, yes. right? Um, if you go to the older school ways, they will say something like Kosong, Kosong. Means zero, zero. We start new. Oh, mm. like forgiveness. Like forgiveness, correct. Yes. But it's a thing. It's a thing that they say. Kosong, Kosong. Kosong, Kosong. Wow. So at the back of the packet, it's Kosong, Kosong. Wow, mm. so meaningful. We so yeah, so I think it's also, and you don't necessarily have to do it do it during Raya. Mm. Anytime you want to send an apology to someone, you can write a little apology note and put into my green packet. Kosong kosong. Mm. Mm. The red one don't have that. The red one, the red one, uh, is something like this, something similar. If you can see, I can't see it. This one is something like that. The red one. 
it's written something like um, you and me okay. dilarang bodoh forever. Oh. Like Valentine like that. This was in commencement of. If you, if you have photos, uh, send it to us. We will include hmm? it in the pod. Yeah, it's, not ready it. it's not ready yet. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's not ready yet. It's under production right now. Okay. It, it comes in commemoration of my mug. Oh. Because the mug comes in pair. Like, you guys got any wedding dinner? Ah? Now, this wedding ang pao very expensive, kan? <laughs> Huh? I, I, recently, when you go to wedding dinners, huh, you also have to see where is the location. Then we will bonkos accordingly to the table. <laughs> so you see the mug, it comes in a pair. So how we were supposed to sell this, I was like, uh, you and me, dilarang bodo forever. <laughs> because Chinese like to po hong pao hong pao while going to wedding. Wa. So yeah. that is the red color one. Mm. The purple one, you know, Indians are they are a little bit suave and all those are. Huh? Hmm? And I want to play a little bit about their festival of light. Mm. So in the Indian one, it says, Baby, light me up. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what I love is, there is always a little bit of culture that you can learn from each other. Mm. Hmm? And it's not necessary you want to use it on a specific race or a specific occasion. It can always cross mm. and what that's what i love about being in this uh country mm. Mm? all of us are racist but we're racist in harmony <laughs> <laughs> all right so i think that's that's uh, thank you so much for coming today thank, thank you, you for Lee. having me i need to shout out our venue sponsor so shout out to iconic co-working you can do your training can work here and also you can do your events here also so thank you so much Simming, for coming again all right thank Bye. you bye no.